just answering a set of questions left by somebody, or actually a bunch of uh, rabbit holes. So here we go. The European satellite Pamela, called Payload for Antimatter Matter Exploration and Light Nuclei Astrophysics, it's a backronym, was dedicated to the detection of cosmic rays to infer antimatter. It is not an antimatter detector. Not necessarily. And again, on another video I have, if you say you've detected antimatter of a specific type uh, by inferring its electron voltage rating, look for other matter that also does this. There may or may not be antimatter detected, but you have to rule that out. This was piggybacked on an Earth-orbiting Russian satellite. Potential source for neutrons. Who knows what they had on it, but it, no, they had solar cells in 2012, was said to have found a self-renewing supply of antiprotons in the Van Allen radiation belt. Okay, this is a different one, but it's still using cosmic ray detectors. So anyway, but to correctly determine the antimatter abundances, it's critical that it was able to reject the normal matter background producing exactly the same signature this is debatable and this depends on solar activity in particular the point in the 11 year solar cycle it's in no excess of antiprotons was found and detecting annihilation events occurred a thousand times more often than would be expected in the absence of antimatter which meant it was a 1000 to 1 ratio but it would still have to discriminate somehow with normal matter producing exactly the same signature. All of this is inconsistent with predictions from the most models of dark matter sources in which a positron and an antiproton axis are correlated. They would be in a similar ratio. Positrons are positive electrons and antiprotons are negatively charged protons. So let's continue. I don't know if this was really valid and again this is inference. Just saying. So I don't know. But that is what it was based on and that was done by digging up older copies of the Wikipedia article and looking for synopses and a lot of Russian translated pages but I'll just use the Wikipedia page because that's what it used. 2000, excuse me, 1943 Leslie White's Law states that a culture evolves as the amount of energy harnessed per capita per year is increased, or as the efficiency of instrumentational means of putting that energy to work is increased. This is a 1940s concept, see also Manifest Destiny. Look that up. It's not related, but it's a similar mindset. If other factors remain constant only. 1964, again, 1964, Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, Kardashev scale, measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement only based on the amount of energy a civilization able to use on a planetary level, on a solar system level, by or on a galactic level. None of these include current levels, and they've been modified since then to include current levels. Also, <coughs> this. Uh, Cosmic hypothetical energy consumption scale has since been using other metrics that are more modern and debunks the whole idea of both of these ideas because a real civilization's level of technological advancement and cultural and culture capability evolves as the amount of knowledge and cooperation within its members increases. If you have a lack of cooperation, your advancement dis is destroyed, and you're, if you lose all of your information, you lose it. Every one of you going out in the forest without knowing how to make a fire are below the level of a caveman because you don't know how to make a fucking fire. It's that straightforward. This is a... I've never liked this scale. It's interesting as chewing gum from the mind or for sci-fi, but the fact is it's a, it's a debunked scaling for this kind of idea because that's we're in the age that disproved it. You can literally start off with an e-book with e-paper, which is a lot more electrically efficient than a solar panel, and start over again from nothing without having any ability or knowledge in your head and be able to recreate all of this. And I'd like to remind everybody, I'm kind of peeking at the idea that this isn't the first time we've been an advanced population on this planet. You could recreate everything we have right now in less than 50 years, one lifespan. You could start with literally nothing. You could go from cavemen to, you can go from, from uh, the Flintstones to Jetsons. 
So anyway, the next part, while you hover and yell, is the Scopo Graph. It's an expired 1967 trademark for a company called Impulse Physics, spelled in very German ways, uh, and is now a generic term for a Trainsimismors. It, it sends a narrow collimated beam of energy from like usually a laser, but it could be any other light source, through the propagation medium you're testing. It could be the atmosphere, sea water, whatever, for the determination of visual range and for a measure of its a coefficient of extinction, which is a specific term that I did not look up. The point is, it's usually uh, associated that brand name with determining runway visibility at airports by testing the air quality or the air effect by firing a beam off and then detecting it back. It has a single point. You don't have to have two points lined up. That was the advantage of it. You could send out a signal and receive it. And I was asked uh, to look into some of this for a specific reason, but we'll go on with it. Train, trademarks are, are available for that. Uh, you can also look up a butt-ton of uh, links below. My criticism of Leslie White's law and the Kardashev scale is that it doesn't actually take into account what we have experienced within my lifespan. Both of these ideas are older than me and are no longer valid. This is back when might made right. And it was associated with power and utilization. And we are now at the point where it's more about conserving energy and materials being a sign of an advanced population. We're less advanced than some of the poor people in India because they can literally take all the garbage from an area, clean it, and build an entire society from it. Not like we've done that repeatedly. These are short-sighted methodologies for measuring culture or... Seriously, you call that civilization, really. Sounds very, um... No. Anyway, as for uh, the request of it, you cannot possibly know what I'm thinking. Okay. Look up that word, the sc scopograph. Sc scopograph. Some other interesting Wikipedia pages I ran into. Hope you don't think I'm too silly posting all of this. I don't. These were interesting to look up. The most annoying part was looking up scopograph because it's literally a trade name that hasn't been used for a long time. It went generic. It's sort of like looking up aspirin. You can find aspirin, but as a part of it being a trademark, it's actually something most people don't know about. It was literally a trademark for something, a psilocylic acid. And I learned that from watching Gilligan, Gilligan's Island. But anyway, well, let's see. I agree with you that phenomena like the events that take place in the Bermuda Triangle is, cause, is likely caused by natural circumstances, which is what I'm currently writing about in my chapter on my 60s disappearance of someone. But I'm pretty sure this plane engine just froze up and it has been one heck of an interesting research project. Always appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you as well. Now, the reason I'm doing that whole thing is I'm going to put that in the title of the video because, oh my God, what a. I mean, that was a rabbit hole. Just looking up subject matter becoming a rabbit hole. Let's look up another one. I'm going to read you the end game and not the question. 1950s. German scientist Paul Otto Hess heard voices and cited Mark 332 from the Bible and wrote a book, Der, I can't pronounce it, otherwise known as Last Day, Doomsday, or Judgment Day, on, and included the idea of what's called a photon belt. I'm going to go through that. but This was recycled in the 1970s as Rings of Alcyon by Samuel Un Hur, who decided the photons were really radiation, calling them manasik. And that's a Sanskrit term for the mind. No, it isn't. Uh, it's not mind or body or energy. It's not your inner chakras or maracas. It's literally you're talking about photons or not. But he decided to say this uh, Sanskrit term for mind and manas is a type of unknown energy. Okay, so it's not photons anymore. Because uh, when that book was written, or the idea was come up with in the 1950s, the idea was you could just take any sciencey sounding word like atom or whatever and make a story up about it. And people found out that unfortunately you run into uh, college classes that teach you that you don't know what you're talking about. Megaton magnet. Um, but he said that was all caused by the splitting of an electron. And then in 2012, the apocalypse group's assertions uh, started using the same concept. So I'm going to read the concept and then I'm going to tear it apart as people get louder instinctively when they hear somebody doing a YouTube video. So, the Sun and Earth uh, are claimed to be currently moving uh, in a way that would cause them to go through the star cluster, the Pleiades star cluster, and past Alcyon, and the Earth will pass through a ring of photons which orbits it, and we're supposed to be the seventh star 
of uh, the Pleiades cl cluster. The trouble is, the Sun and Earth with it are currently moving away from that star. And we're 450 light years away, and that's an eight year light year across cluster. And Alcyon at me is not actually causing the other stars to orbit it. Next, photons always travel in straight lines unless they interact with matter or gravity. And matter just, you know, collides it out or whatever, or re emits it at a different frequency, uh, like fluorescent light does. Um, you hit it with ultraviolet light and you get the light spectrum. So um, a photon belt is physically only possible with a few possibilities unless you're making it something that isn't based on the word photon light or even what happens if you split an electron I'll put a link for that too as well you end up with a requirement of something on the order of being a, a black hole we already know what's gonna happen at this point um, and it would be unlikely an unlikely variation of it where it would have the light rays being bent around an event horizon but only in one plane and under 1.5 times the Schwartz filed r radius of the uh, black hole. Any photon's orbit around a black hole would become fundamentally unstable and no longer travel in straight lines until it escaped and then go went in a straight line or falls into it. Staying at the event horizon would be a, in our reference point, or its, short, depending on which time space constant you want to deal with. So my opinion or insight on feedback on the photon belt is that it's literally taking words and mixing them together. And the person could have been referring to just as easily, conceptually, of a belt of light around your waist. I'm not kidding. These words that sound sciencey are used for sci-fi stories. I consider this an example of somebody doing that and daring you, again, to point out that they're talking about something nonsensical so they can weed you out of their population that might be listening to them so they don't have to deal with you. Um, next, someone asked me, you spoke about the JFK assassination. Have you looked into the evidence of such and such has got? He shows all the gunmen, um, um, but the rest you can see no gunmen on the grassy knoll. They were over a bit in the shelter. I would link to his channel, but I don't know how to. Well, I'll need you to. Just find the... Uh, I'll try to look it up. Let's see. If the, if the video channel has the same name as that, I'll look it up and see what's going on. Um, next, um, I am crap with technology, but if you put his uh, n channel name, the first, uh, first one that pops up, so I can go look him up. Okay, and then you put in this in quotes or in parentheses, parenthetically. I'm not sure about one of them because why would you put the gun out the window to check where the car is before turning onto Elm Street? There's a lot of assertions that are made like that where someone does something that they're making an assertion about and it's almost impossible to figure out what they're talking about in most cases. So I will go review that if you like. Now, uh, about anything else, I really don't have anything else to discuss here, but as for JFK assassination, I'll look this up and see if there's anything, anything interesting. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to clear my inbox. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.